Okay. So again, good evening, everyone. I'm George Kohart, Chair of the Planning Board. Um, <clears throat> we're a hybrid meeting tonight. Folks in city councils can come to the podium and make a presentation or make comment. People in the Zoom room can only address the board through the chat feature, which Carol and Miss, our staff, or myself will read to the group and to the record. Um, so again, we had a call for public comment for any items that are not on the agenda. One last chance for that. Now that we have everything ironed out, is there anyone who would list, like to make a public comment for an item that's not on the agenda? Chat. Yeah. And again, if you, I see your hand raised, Ms. Lefko, but you need to uh, write your comment into chat, if you could. And if that's possible, we'll hold on for a minute or two. The chat feature is down below on your toolbar on the Zoom screen. You can open up that little window. Um, I. Um, we did receive uh, an email from Claudia Lefko today, or perhaps it was yesterday, regarding an item on William Street uh, development that's currently in progress. She had a question regarding the open space calculations for this new project. Um, the planning board uh, members have seen that and read it. We don't really comment on these public comments per se, um, but know that um, items like this are taken into consideration by the building commissioner, and at the time of site review, at, um, a CO, those calculations are done again to make sure that um, the developer, the applicant, is um, truly in line with what the projected open space requirements were on the project. Um, so I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Lefko, that we can't get your chat comment, but I hope I paraphrased your, paraphrased your comment well enough. Is there anyone else who would like to make a public comment? Okay, seeing none in the chat room. And again, during the hearing, when we open it up for public comment, those people on Zoom will need to type in their comments into chat and we will read them aloud to the room and to the record. So here we are again at a continuation of a hearing from November 9th for a site plan amendment at 79 King Street to add a six story to previously approved plans in Northampton, map ID 31B216. And we have a short presentation by the applicant. Uh, thank you. Uh, again, Jeff Squire from the First Chair Design Group here representing uh, 79 King Street LLC. Um, as you noted, the, um, this is simply an amendment to the previous Oops. site plan. Um, to add a six story to what was previously shown as a five story building. Uh, Elevation does a pretty effective job of demonstrating that um, that change is really just adding this um, additional additional uh, level. Um, uh, let's see. And again, just um, a shortened site plan, the existing site, um, uh, currently Goggins Real Estate Offices um, the site plan was to develop the um, site with a five-story building, which is now six. Um, the site plan, for all intents and purposes, has not changed. Um, and I think we are largely waiting for DPW comments to come back. Um, we did receive those comments back today, this afternoon. Um, happy to walk through those. I think there were majority that had been noted as being addressed. Um, there were a couple of utility related things for work in the street, um, just ensuring, you know, um, uh, conformance with DPW standards and, and clearances and, uh, separations at the time of construction documents. Um, there was, I know, a comment about, um, working with, uh, the electric utility, uh, and again, we don't disagree with their comment about trying to, um, 
minimize the amount of work that's required. Um, a lot of that's going to be driven by Eversource's needs and requirements. Um, and um, I believe there was one final comment about site distance. Um, and I know there was some conversation about that earlier um, at the previous hearing. And I do have a slide at the end to talk about that. But if there's anything else specific to um, you know, any of their comments that um, I missed or would need to be addressed, I'd be happy to go over those. Um, again, just some perspective views from, from King Street um, and a visibility study that was, was provided by the architects. Um, as part of the amendment application. Um, and then, yeah, so DBW had a comment about site distance and, and um, removing some of the spaces along King Street in front of the property to comply with AASHTO standards. And AASHTO standards actually require about a 300 foot clear site distance from that driveway. And so the image on the left um, is a 300 foot site distance from that um, from that existing curb cut um, to the site, which is going to be retained. And so, you know, it effectively removes, you know, six, seven spaces. Um, the the slide on the on the right is really just showing all the different driveways that exit out onto King Street in that little corridor that all would be affected by that same. I don't think there's anybody. You know, and so, you know, I, we're certainly not necessarily in a position to want to petition the city council to remove spaces, but it's um it's sort of an existing condition that we're not really making any worse so um i think um uh, it really you know we're not by not moving the curb cut and and you know making major changes to the parking we don't anticipate it to be you know a major issue um again i don't think i had anything else to to present i was really just waiting for dpw comments to come back um and most of those i think have been addressed so I, I think also we we're waiting for a photo metric plan for the lighting. Uh, there was one in the original application, um, which I can bring up, um, but there should have been one. There was one in the submittal, the submittal package. Yeah. And I don't think it's varied from the one that was originally yeah. approved. Yeah. None of the site, really nothing on site has, has changed. <clears throat> Except for the stormwater. Except for the stormwater. Uh, Yes, yes, correct. Yeah. yeah, so the this is the photometric plan that was submitted with the application. And also, I just want to clarify for Department of Public Works, there were there were um, unaddressed comments from the original application. So there were a series of comments, a lot of technical details. Um, so in this interim period, the um, continuation period, um, uh, Berkshire Design submitted those um, responses. And so Department of Public Works has now gone through and identified the ones that, um, including this one that was still unaddressed, but basically the stormwater issues have been addressed to DPW satisfaction. And then this issue about the, uh, and then there's still some utility connections and requirements that are, um, would be subject for any of app, any applicants to go back to DPW before construction. Um, so I just wanted to um, note that and um, to follow up on what Jeff said about the 300 foot site distance. I don't know. I mean, that's, um, I don't know if you have more details about the AASHTO standard because it depends on all the variables. So I don't know if it's because of the road classification or um, the um, vehicles um, traveled on that way, but certainly there could be uh, mitigation in the future by city council looking at one or two parking spaces right at that driveway if it is deemed to be an issue going forward. Okay. Other questions from the board? So we have six conditions from the first hearing that are still valid, still out there. And we're going to add this one more to that prior to the issuance of a CO, the applicant must uh, submit a stamp as built lighting plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm a, we, we just spent a lot of time on our lighting ordinances. I'm a little concerned myself about the rooftop lighting because it'll be used as kind of a social space for the residents. Mm -hmm. Um and we're not putting any limits on how it's used, but, uh, you know, it will be very obvious from the street. So I'm sure that all of the lighting up there still apply to 
the current ordinances, if not the newer ones. Um, and we talked about the rooftop and uh, the 70 foot maximum. We talked about the utilities that are up there. And we also mentioned that no other structures can be put up on the roof unless there's, again, an amendment to this um, site plan. Correct. All right. So let's, if there's nothing from the board, let's open it up for public comment. Uh, is there anyone here in council chambers who would like to speak to the application? All right. Is there anybody in on hybrid virtually at the meeting who would like to make a comment? And, and again, um, we cannot take verbal comments, but if you would type it into the chat feature, we'll read it aloud to the group and to the record. So we'll give you just a moment to get those keyboards clacking. I don't see any. I don't see any. Most of your butters are aware of what's going on. Um, the railroad has no issue with their with their line in the backyard. Okay. Um, if there are no other questions for the applicant, should we consider closing the public hearing now that we have our conditions set? Move to close the public comment. Second. Second. All right. Um, discussion. Carolyn, I just want to clarify, this is for an additional 22 rooms. I think there's a typo in the staff report that talks about 15 rooms, but this is for 22, right? Um, 22 additional rooms? I believe so. 22 units. 22 units. Okay, that okay. moves. Thank you. Mm. Okay. I think that was, sorry about that. I think that might have been a holdover from last time when they hadn't fixed their table. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Um, all right, motion has been made, seconded. All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye, okay, it's unanimous. So then any other comments, questions? Just... All right, is there a motion then to this uh, amended plan? At 79 King Street. I'll, uh, I'll move that we approve the site plan amendment at 79 King Street to add a six-story um, yep. list of conditions. List of our now seven conditions. Seven conditions, and I don't have them in front of me. Right. Um, so you could just say the previous conditions are still applicable and then add... The one. Right. Okay. So uh, th that way it doesn't erase the other one. It just, this gets added to it. Okay. So approving the um, amendment with the seven, the six previous conditions and the addition of seventh. Okay. Which was. Speaks to the, um, an as, an as built plan. As built the, um, photometric plan prior to certificate of occupancy. Right. All right, motions been made by Melissa and seconded by Stacy. So it's it's like uh, I see you nodding your head. Five hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Four in favor. It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all very Good much. luck with that project. Very yeah. Get it going. Yeah. Oh boy. Now the next one. Oh yeah. It's been blinking for two months. Oh my God. Yeah. Why have I not only known? Yeah. You're, you're getting like. <laughs> no, I wasn't nodding. I was coming to the um, I 
We're, we're going to take a quick uh, couple of minute pause here, folks, um, while we address some technical issues on our hybrid meeting. Um, so we will be back very shortly. Can you pause for a minute? Hit the pause button. I can take a commercial break. Good. Under follow is where? Oh, I don't know. Not my project. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I vaguely remember it because I used to do a lot of work down there. Got it. Yeah. I thought it was just a massive, like, four, seven thousand. Oh, <clears throat> no, I mean, the, the only one I'm doing is the Turkey Hill one. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful work. Yeah. You're thinking of Lebec or somebody's doing that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for your patience. So we're back live at the city council chambers for the Northampton planning board meeting, and we're opening up a hearing for a site plan review to add a detached garage warehouse by D.A. Sullivan and Sons at 504 East Hampton Road, map ID 44-036. And I think our applicant has a presentation. All right. Uh, so. My name is Terry Reynolds. T. Reynolds Engineering for D.A. Sullivan. Um, and uh, D.A. Sullivan is proposing to uh, build a garage uh, facility um, behind the existing warehouse building at 504 East Hampton Road. And so what is currently there is the old, I, I believe, was the Roland's Motorcycle Shop. Um, and now they currently just use it for warehousing. Um, and so it has parking out front. Um, it's generally paved throughout um, down to the edge of the existing building um, along where they, to the east down gradient. Um, what's being proposed is to build a four bay garage um, behind the building in this area here, uh, they're going to remove this little bump out in between the two. Um, 
and extend the pavement down for, for the garage area. <clears throat> um, there's no proposed change in parking. The parking will remain up front. There's approximately 11 spaces that are currently there. Um, the As a warehouse use, they're required uh, with the addition to have seven spaces. Um, so they're, they should be fine in that regard. Um, this plan has been approved by conservation um, because it's being proposed within a buffer zone. There's wetlands offsite um, along the eastern edge and uh, northern. Um, and that's that's been addressed with the stormwater management system uh, that is shown here in the grading where the stormwater runoff uh, is coming down and then collected into a water quality swale and then into a infiltration system that wraps around the building that also collects uh, the runoff from the the bid the building itself, which is a shed roof. So it all comes to the rear of uh, the building. Um, it's uh, you know, it's it's pretty pretty extensive for what's left on the site, but it is all within the setbacks. Um, and uh, it is out of sight, and uh, we don't anticipate being an issue and change of use. Uh, it's consistent with it, what's out there, and it's the appropriate zoning. It is um, office industrial up in this area. So, um, and uh, I'll show you what the building also looks like. So we have a... If I can get back to it, and uh, bear with me, I'm bringing that up. So I can see that. Um, so basically it's a very simple building. Um, this is the, looking at it from the East. Um, I, I never understand why they call it a West elevation, but, uh, this is the East side here. Uh, the North side is, this is actually the South side of the building. Um, and then this is, um, the West side in between the new and the old, and then the, the bay doors in here. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Oh. And for the board? Start. Um, Are there utilities being brought into the new building? No. No, not even uh, water? It'll have electric that they'll take off of the existing building. Um, and um, and then, yeah, I'm not sure whether they're going to need to bring water in because they, they have to put floor drains in as a garage. Uh -huh. um, and they may have to wet traps. But I, I'm not clear whether they're going to have to do that or they've got an alternative. Okay, because there's bathroom facilities. This, this is connected to the operation up front. It's all one business one entity yes. so yeah. they'll use... it's it's warehousing for da, DA sullivan okay. so they'll they may be servicing their trucks in there so okay. on can you or carolyn tell us just a little bit about the uh, conservation permit and any uh conditions that they put on it that sure would be a uh, good for us to understand um so it did receive a conservation permit um and uh Basically, you know, because it's a uh, industrial zone, it um, it is eligible to be closer than the normal um, for for this kind of activity. Um, but so things that were done here uh, in in terms of mitigation uh, were well required planting in here, um, providing the infiltration system uh, as I spoke to here um 
there's a lot of invasive uh, knotweed in the back corner that's also being removed as part of that approval. Um, so, uh, and with the stormwater system here, it's doing the standard um, stormwater regulation requirements of infiltrating and, and matching pre and post. Did, uh, did they, or perhaps should we speak to the storage of materials outside of the building? That could, you know, there can be this creep sometimes, especially with construction storage of materials that uh, on this site, there is really no space for them to storage, store material outside. Um, currently, they're using that backyard for, for some storage. Yep. But once this is in place, there really is no room for that. And Carolyn, this isn't Watershed Protection District or um, Wetland, Wetland, Wetland. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, this is office industrial. Okay. So this is an office industrial district. So um, this type of use is what's envisioned and allowed, but the back and properties too, both in both directions have wetlands yep. going back to the back very, bike path. It's very wet yeah. right now. And, and Arcadia. And Arcadia. So, yeah. That's why I thought perhaps it leaked into the WSP, but. Uh, no, no, that's not, it's not a drinking water supply. It's just uh, wetlands. Yep. Yeah. Um, there's a, we have notes about one large tree being remo removed and some other trees being planted. Are those plantings going to happen out front or back here by the, the construction? The plantings are generally out front. Um, there are, we have four, four trees being proposed, um, two to three and a half inch caliper. Okay. So I saw five, right? There's one more in the Oh, yeah, back, there's another one. Which in, I think, I'm sorry, yes. My one question, and I just don't see it um, over in your notes, it calls for 12 buffer zone my mitigation shrubs. Yes, uh, along the edge, um, down in this lower section here, Yeah. there is a mitigation shrubs proposed oh. as part of that. Okay, okay. It's, it's just not on here, so yeah, gotcha. Do you know how rubbish is handled on this site or will be handled? They have a dumpster up front currently. Um, that's up right now. It's uh, in this storage area up in this corner right here. Okay. Small dumpster. Um, Lighting? So there's no, there's no, currently no lighting, site. stoop lighting. Just uh, um, I saw three, I think, wall mount fixtures. They're just uh, building um, lighting. 30? Uh, yeah. I guess I one on one side and two on the other. <laughs> Not site lighting, just attached to the building. Yes. Correct. Um, Well, I would like it if it would. Well, you know, the um, elevation is eluding me. <laughs> I know. I can't find them either right now. Um, I keep having to open it up again for some reason. Here it is. Yeah, so... Um, as far as I know, there's just the stoop lighting by the doors. Right. And then in between the bay doors. Oh, I didn't even catch that. So, okay. So there's two on one side, one on the other, and then looks like three of them up front. Yeah. And those just have to be downcast. Downcast. And yeah. 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 They're dark. Okay. I can play. Right. Yeah. Standard. Good. Good. Okay. Um, so it, it's all the building is within the the hundred foot buffer of the wetlands, but yes, but that's pretty much been reviewed by the consum. Um, so is it worth us saying anything about storage of equipment outside of the building, or um, how is that monitored if if it's not in our conditions? Can they do that willy-nilly, or was that then go to CONSCOB or the building inspector? 
You mean storage um, in tour with in the protected area of the wetlands, or just generally storage? Generally around that building because it's all within the buffer. Um, well, anything on the um, paved surface would um, would be allowed, um, but if it goes onto the edge. Um, that would be a conservation commission permitting issue and enforcement issue um, because they're approved for the disturbed area shown on the plan. Uh -huh. So if they're within the con, you know, in that paved surface and they're um, putting trucks or other items there, yeah. that would be allowed. Oh, yeah, disturbed. Yeah, there really is an opportunity to really be anywhere else. I mean. Um, the space they have is very, very limited. Okay, good. Thank you. Other issues, other items? Okay, well, why don't we, have we done this already? Do we open it up for the public hearing? And we had none? Mm -hmm. Nope. Then let's go to the public. Is there anybody here in council chambers who would like to speak to this application? <laughs> no, hearing none, we'll move it out to our, our, uh, Audience in on Zoom, is there anybody who would like to comment on this application on East Hampton Road? And if so, a reminder, you can't, unfortunately, give comments verbally, but you can use the chat room. And either Carolyn or I will read that aloud to the record. I don't see any chats. All right. Smooth sailing here. Um, if there are no other questions from the board, we'll take a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Seconded by Mr. Taylor. All right. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, close the public hearing. Unanimous. Thanks. So now we can't ask the presenter any questions. Um, any other last items? No. Nope. Good. Good. Great warehouse. Looks like a good warehouse. Just what the purpose is. Reese Hampton Road. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, is there a motion? This is for the development of the warehouse on East Hampton Road. Okay. All right. Um with absolutely no consistency that I can understand. I'm sorry, um, I'll ask staff, was there a, any DPW comments that didn't reach to that level? Um, well, they do usually comment. Um, they are, switch, They. I didn't see any comments for, oh, that um, they may have been, if you just give me one second, yeah. I think they may have been technical. Um, I think they came in early, actually. That's why I was... Um, I think I put them in just a second. I'm sorry about that. Nope. Uh, we should have thought of it before we closed the public hearing. They are staff comments, so. <laughs> um, let's see. Dump them in. Um, I don't see them, but um, uh, again, they would probably have been technical issues as opposed to site related issues. Yeah. Um, so I'm just doing one quick check on 504. While she's doing that, um, George, do we do we have one condition? Um, that if any lighting is installed down the road, uh, that it must comply with the current ordinance and be turned off one hour after the close of business. Ah, okay. Or placed on a motion sensor. That's question about that. Do we need to make that a condition if we have that ordinance in place? Well, it's not in place now. It's one more week. <laughs> so yes, you would need to make that a condition, even though that's that will likely be what happens going forward. Yeah. 
And before we second the motion, there's uh, the, uh, the little question about sidewalk. Normally in a situation like this, we'd ask an applicant to install a sidewalk. Um, right. But because DOT, you want to explain I, I didn't quite understand the rationale there. Um, so this is DOT right of way. Yep. And so only they can approve whether it's appropriate to have a sidewalk there. Um, they are working on a plan from East Hampton towards Northampton to create um, a complete street, at least to the East Hampton line, which is still a few lots down. Um, and the part of the, they've been um, considering moving it all the way up to at least Lovefield Street. So I think, I guess ultimately, um, they're either going to try to make a connection down to the um, shared use path that um, crosses Lovefield um, to the south, I guess, um, or potentially they, when they do the next section improvements, they're going to come up to into Northampton at their to the Earl Street Bridge. It's not that that's necessarily on the, you know, list of projects. I don't know what the timing of that is, but I would say that because this is all controlled, this is um, state route that we, that I don't, the planning board doesn't have jurisdiction to tell them to do it in the state route, state layout. Interesting. And the comment about the shared use path, which is right behind here, at other times we might ask an applicant to consider a connection, but because of the wetlands, I think it would be kind of onerous. Um, and uh, yeah, for your employees who might come on a bicycle to DA Sullivan um, or walk, but Right. And then the other complicated, so they're <laughs> just to make it really complicated. Um, right now, um, Lovefield Street is closed because there's a culvert that was um, washed out right before you get to the shared use path. Uh -huh. So you can't even connect to, uh, you can't take Lovefield to connect to the shared use path. So we may be looking at some point to an alternative connection if the street doesn't if the culvert is closed extensively oh okay yeah. thank you so back to our motion on the floor thank you mr taylor so motion has been made to accept the uh um, application for detached garage at 504 east Hampton road is with the condition with the one condition about the future lighting that might be installed um is there a second I'll second. Okay, seconded by Melissa. Any more discussion? Thanks for filling in the blanks there. All those in favor? Hey. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let me just get this. So Sam. Sam, yep, and, Mo and Melissa seconded. Was unanimous with one condition. Yeah, I was a little concerned that they hadn't met with the Conservation Commission yet. <laughs> Thank you. Well, congratulations. All right. It'll just be a few minutes, folks, in our virtual room until we uh, start the next application by Smith College to demolish an existing building and build a new a new one. So
Um, it's not loaded up yet. So. <laughs> oh, this is it. Okay. I'm just going to wait. Where did I go? What happened in Zoom? Oh, here we go. There are other kind of team that are in the Zoom room? There are. We have our architect and civil engineer on standby. They know that they can't verbally point to the podium, so they have to have a By chat. They're counting on me to get there. <laughs> well, thank you everyone for your patience. We are back at the Northampton Planning Board meeting of December 14th, and we're opening up a, a major site plan review to demolish the existing building and build an 11,000 square foot building by Smith College facilities at zero College Lane, map ID 31B-246. Um, and we need a, a simple majority vote of four of our seven members for this technical permit. Um, and there's a presentation by the applicant. Uh, good evening, Chair. Thank you. And board members, um, thanks for having me. Carolyn, thanks for getting this presentation loaded. Uh, Charlie Cohen, I'm a project manager at Smith College. I represent the, the board trustees um, who have authorized us to go ahead with this project. It's a roughly 15,300 square foot building for our career services program and our Center for Leadership. Um, they'll be combined into this new facility. Um, and it's located uh, strategically next to our Office of Admissions. Uh, we want to um, let parents know that students that are coming to Smith have a future ahead of them. Uh, and this program will help them uh, transition from their liberal arts education into a professional career. That's the intent of the building. Uh, it's going on a site that um, once housed Hopkins A and B, if anybody remembers that far back, two residence houses that were taken down on turn of the century, maybe, 2002, thereabouts, uh, I think. Um, there's also a 18 space parking a lot and a small wood frame on the site. Uh, the new building, unfortunately, nudges over far enough towards the wood frame that it needs to be removed from the site. We're working with a local individual to relocate that building into Northampton, uh, Book Rav, I believe, is the location that they want to put it. So we're working with them. We've we've figured out a way to get it off campus, but we're not sure if it's going to go over the city streets yet. So that's uh, yet to be determined. If it doesn't uh, get relocated, it will be demolished, fortunately. Um, so do I tab forward here, Carolyn, or arrow? Um, use the mouse okay. too, and um, maybe the best way is. Oh gosh, oh, you can just scroll. Just scroll. Yep. Okay. All right. And then you can, if it's too. Yeah, that's probably. That's yeah. So here we're looking at a, a blow up of the existing um, building. Here's the A College Lane building, uh, the entrance off of College Lane to the parking lot. Uh, this is what we call Chapin Drive. It's not a city street. It's actually internal to the campus. Um, and then across Chapin Drive are the residence houses that front onto Elm Street. Um, we have a lot of utilities in this site. We have a steam main uh, that goes through the middle of the site uh, that serves the quadrangle up off of uh, Paradise Road, we have uh, a lot of drainage to the site, fiber optics, uh, some power cabling and so forth. Um, but all of that, with the exception of a gas service state college lane, are Smith Utilities. Um, again, looking at another portion of the existing site here, this is the lower end of the parking lot. At the bottom of the screen is Lyman Plant House. Uh, this kind of uh, dotted area is an underground portion of uh, building of, of of the greenhouse here. And then we have some site walks that wind down through there. Uh, you can tell from the topographical um, that there is quite a slope across this site. Uh, 
So uh, the architect and engineers um, did a wonderful job citing this building. Um, the reason it nudges over towards the eight college lane building is we wanted to keep the view shed open from the residence houses that are on Elm Street, as well as the camp center. So to try to keep that view open down to the pond, uh, it's currently um, partially blocked by some screening that's around the parking lot. I'm just going to scroll through these site plans a little bit um, to get you to the proposed site plan here. Um, so it's a, it's a, a two-level building. It has a, a two-story section and a three-story section. From the College Lane side, you would be looking at what appears to be a two-story two or a three-story section, depending on which of the L's you're looking at. From the Chape and Lane side, you'd be looking at a one- to two-story building. Um, the, um, the challenge with the site was to get some universal accessibility uh, through it uh, and around the building. We currently don't have an accessible route from, say, the plant house entrance up to central campus plateau there. So uh, what they've done um, is worked with the grades to create a winding path that wraps around the building, both sides. i get to that. Uh, you can see it in this drawing, if you can look through all the clutter. Um, but you can see kind of between what's the new building and what would be Chapin House towards central campus, there's a kind of a, uh, a walk that snakes its way down uh, to keep a 5% or less grade for accessibility uh, to traverse that steep landscape. There's a second one that loops up around the top of the building and connects Chapin Drive to College Lane. Um, we're paying a lot of attention to the intersection up at College Lane and Chapin Drive because that has traditionally been a heavy, heavily used pedestrian crossway, a lot of traffic on College Lane. So we're trying to open up view sheds there and make that as safe crossing as we can. Um, I, I wish uh, our site engineer could be here to talk about the stormwater management we're doing, but we have uh, considered this to be an over an acre because it's such an extensive project. We've done the stormwater review with the DPW and they have signed off uh, for us on the project. Um, nitrogen control, all the stuff that we need to do for their requirements. So uh, we're meeting uh, all the regulations that we need to uh, with the city. Um, here's an idea of the change in, in grade across the site. Uh, again, uh, maybe a better view of the walks that kind of work down through here. Um, we do have some water features incorporated into this uh, kind of curved walkway, uh, so there's a swale with retention areas, and this will be planted with uh, some sort of field mix um, to naturalize the area and let the water disperse as it kind of flows through the site. We also have uh, retention basins and so forth uh, for requirements. Um, there's a green roof on this portion. This would be the two-story build building right here. Uh, so about two-thirds of that roof is green. Uh, that's holding water also. And we have um, some pervious paver areas um, to let water filtrate through those also. Again, more. Um, this building will be served by the Central Campus uh, Geothermal District. Um, so we are setting the building up right now to be temporarily heated with hot water from Chapin House off of our steam system because the geothermal will not be installed on Central Campus until probably functional 2027, maybe 28. So this building will be completed um, before that happens. And so we're putting the infrastructure in now over to Chapin and we'll be making hot water off of the steam until the geothermal can be connected in and then it'll be the 130 low temp water from the central district. Um, so the building is designed to accommodate low temp hot water system. Uh, it's almost passive solar, we're going for it. Uh, it's lead gold. Um, and it's also mass timber. So we're looking at a reduced carbon uh, building as opposed to other typical steel and uh, concrete deck. Um, it's also designed to take advantage of the Southern exposure across the pond. In fact, sun has been a challenge for the architects. They're working on mitigating it to some degree, but uh, we'll take advantage of it where we can. Um, So again, just some of the uh, work they put into this 5% grade to make sure we keep that accessible route. That's probably a better picture of it. So there's a sidewalk from up here. The kind of front entrance of the building is here. You'll see it better in the floor plans and the elevations, but in the site plan, the building faces Chapin. Fairly short front yard here. Um, 
this is a, a pretty important route, shape, and drive for what happens on campus in terms of student traffic um, events. The commencement parade is through there. So it's we're paying a lot of attention to the appearance of the building. It's in a very prominent location. It's it's a, a sculpture in the round, really. There's no back door to this building. So architecturally, it's been really important to get every elevation of this building to look appropriate for the campus and to make a good impression on uh, both students and their parents as they come to campus. <clears throat> um, we are leaving also a little breathing room here between um, Lyman Plant House and this building, as there will be future work in Lyman, obviously, and there's opportunities in this building in the future to uh, connect it a little better to Central Campus. Right now it has a front door onto College Lane, but that's just not very inviting. So we're looking at the future also. Um, So we had all site details here moving through civil. Um, we get into some of the landscaping. Um, let me move along a little further. We are not going to go with traditional lawns for the most part. We will have some formal um, manicured lawn areas, but very limited. Uh, most of this because of the slope sites. Um, is going to be uh, dedicated to meadow grasses and things like that, um, and some more intensive gardens um, where they are prominently displayed to uh, to visitors and others coming to the building. Um, I would like to, I don't see, Carolyn, that we have plans at elevate. Well, maybe we do. I guess it's just loading. So here's a better example of uh, the walks, some planting beds. There's uh, meadow grasses. There's, there's, Traditional lawns, there's low mow grass, uh, there's walks, there's actually site walls uh, for sitting on, acting as retaining walls. And then the uh, the drainage swale, you want to call it that, um, it comes down through the walk that retains a water and actually is an educational feature on the site for students to show them how you can retain water on a site without throwing it into a pipe in a pitch basin. Um, this is, uh, it demonstrates, this is the rooftop terrace, uh, and it looks like we're looking at one of the upper floors here. It's like level level two, but anyways, this is the green roof. We have a, a kind of a sedum type area here, where these dots are, with a paver area around the outside, and then more intensive gardens around this deck area. Uh, and this deck will provide an opportunity to look out over the pond. Um, And uh, so we don't have any major trees we, we're going to be losing on the site, uh, but we will be planting quite a few additional. And there is one special tree in front of A College Lane that we're going to try to relocate. It's a 30-year-old dwarf something or other, beach. <laughs> and more site details. Arthur's probably like, go on to page, I'll go to page so-and-so. I know it's where everything is. Um, any questions on the site as I kind of keep toggling through here? Yeah. So part of the, uh, the work is reconfiguration of the handicap spaces. We're losing 18 spaces. So we have to just make some data. Parking and they're a little bit further away, but they're kind of surprised that we didn't figure out a way to get them closer to the building. We'll have to try to travel or safety or the other Right. So we're, we're certainly conscious of that. Um, we're very reactive to um, we have a lot of different uh, stakeholders on campus, as you know, and we're very reactive to that if we need to provide handicap parking. Closer than maybe what code says, we will do it without question. Right now, um, we're, we're sensitive to shape and drive only because it is shape and drive. Uh, and this building, like I said, is um, there's no back door. Let's put it that way. Um, so we want to use, we want to take advantage of a, a current parking area that's not well utilized, which is between Hopkins and Haven House, uh, and reconfigure that. But we can't really do that until geothermal is done with it because they're going to be running pipes through it. So. 
we're going to come back to you in the future with a plan to reconfigure that parking area uh, appropriately and do it. Um, so that will, that's where the handicap parking will be. It'll still be less than 100 feet, I think, to the front door uh -huh. from those handicapped spots, and it is dead flat. The rest of the site being that slope, you're not going to find very good parking close to that building or handicap. On, uh, boy, what is it? What slide is it? C600. There's a little crosshatched area across from that handicapped area. And I think there's a designation perhaps for bicycle parking, but I can't. It's probably up at one of the first slides. It says, uh, oh, boy. I think we have a bicycle parking on the terrace that's just outside um, the front. Yeah, up in here, right? The front sign. And what is that crosshatch area across from the bike rack? Is that a pullout for traffic? Oh, is that across the drive from the building? Yeah. That's a drop-off location. Okay. So the um, the services for this building, since there is no back door, there's no loading dock, um, typically we assign custodians to serve areas. And the custodian that would serve this building, although I can't say for certain, would uh, would serve the few buildings in that particular area, this one not being overly large. Um, trash and recycling uh, for most of that general area goes to Chapin House. There's a loading dock there with a trash compactor, a cardboard compactor, uh, dumpsters, um, and so forth, because we have a kitchen facility there. So that would be the location that the um, waste and recycling would go to for this building. And that's typically done across it's Nielsen Library, for example. Everything goes through Nielsen, through Alumni Gym, and out on the other side of that building. So it depends on uh, kind of the configuration of the buildings. And okay. The where. And that space where the current dumpster is and the handicapped parking is going is very close to that very signature weeping beech tree. I've talked to our gardens people about that. Yes. And is that, are, are you disturbing that area around the weeping beach or staying within that? No, there's, there's a lot of hardscape there. That dumpster location is kind of odd anyways. Um, it used to, that dumpster used to serve Haven House when they had a kitchen way back when. It was moved from the building, away from the kitchen, away from the building, uh, last renovation, and kind of stuck out there in the middle of that site. Um, we want to improve on that and move it back to the building and screen it. Just back to the, the current uh, wood frame building yep. that uh, infringes on this project. Did that go through a demolition delay permit or? It did. It did. Okay. And somebody came forward and said that they are interested in trying to move it. Out. So the process worked. Yeah. Great. Okay. We think. Yeah. We hope. <laughs> we, hope. we hope so. That would be great. Yeah. We want to publicize that if it actually works. That'd be great. It'll be a long drive. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'd all, the, the, the town loves to see those houses being moved. I'm sure we could get Historic Northampton to get their volunteers. To pull ropes. Um, <laughs> the, the the rooftop deck yes. is open to the public, the, to students and visitors, and there's some safeguards about the um, the edge of the rooftop. Let me say. So yeah. So um, when I say when you say open to the public, we our buildings, our administrative buildings, our classroom buildings are typically unlocked from seven to depending on what building it is, five or. 7 p.m. Um, so they're open most of the day. Were they open to the public? Well, yeah, kind of, sort of. They're open to the public. But um, in this particular building, will not be those spaces won't be just for the occupants or the stakeholders in that building. It will be open to the campus, mm -hmm. certainly for use for events and so forth. So there is, yeah, that availability. There's safeguards up there. Yeah. Um, and currently, there's no sidewalk along that part of the driveway alongside Paradise. So a completely new sidewalk is being built. It's, it's always been a bone of contention that there isn't a sidewalk on both sides of College Lane right. to connect down to the plant house, especially. So you get people crisscrossing. Yeah. Yes, they're going to add that piece of sidewalk. Right. Other questions from the board? Or we'll open it up to the public. 
Hey. Can you give me those the renderings? Yeah, um, I'm guessing that they're in here. So there we go. Um, so here's some rendered elevations. Uh, when it gets there, come on. There we go. Um, so the upper right uh, rendering is the view you would see from uh, College Lane, Upper College Lane. Um, so the left side is the two-story elevation from down below. And then the three story, um, there is a fairly high parapet, uh, five or six feet on top of that. So it gives a little more prominence uh, and stature, um, architecturally speaking, I guess. Um, the other image is a similar view, just from a different angle. Um, and the parapet also will screen some of the mechanical equipment. I'm thinking. Uh, and then the lower left is the view from, say, Chapin Drive. As you go down, you see the two-story elevation there, and then the one-story with the uh, the deck and the green roof on top, and then an end elevation. The two uh, the two ends, far ends of the building, are mainly glass um, uh, to kind of give students a, a view inside of this building and what's going on in there to uh, maybe reduce their uh, tendency to be shy or not really want to engage with this particular program. So they're trying to engage the students by making it. Uh, really inviting and um, and exciting to see what's going on here. This, your colleagues and other students are in there using those spaces. Um, it'll also, in a very kind of subtle way, provide uh, a little bit of lighting outside, um, kind of a globe type effect or a lantern type effect, as opposed to throwing lighting on the building. Uh, we can get a really nice effect with uh, very subtle lighting in the evenings, just kind of emanating, blowing out of the building. You'll see that on the additions to Nielsen Library. Um, it's a very low level of light. Um, our James Lowenthal, our, our local uh, dark sky authority, um, really appreciates it when we could do lighting like that. So there's no glare and certainly no uplighting. There will be some site lighting. It'll be our campus standard, uh, 2500 AV uh, full cutoff fixtures spaced. And that kind of creates a, a subtle effect of light uh, from here to there uh, at a low level. But enough to feel secure. Yeah, it's in the package. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah, it won't look too different from the uh, other portions of campus if you're familiar with how we light the campus. Um, again, some straight on elevations. Um, so you're seeing this large curtain wall on the end elevation here uh, with the intermittent floor plates. Um, this will have uh, bird protection. Uh, all of this glass will have bird protection frit on it, as well as louvers um, to deter uh, collisions with the glass. Again, uh, carefully screening mechanical equipment with the parapet. Um, the uh, envelope will be brick. Um, it's kind of a brown brick, I think, uh, brown tan, um, picking up on some of the, uh, the natural elements in the landscape there. It's not the typical red brick we do. Um, and there's some decorative brickwork on the building also. Uh, if I get to renderings, you'll see some of that actually. This is this is one of the areas of decorative brick here at the front entry. Um, as I said, the building will be structurally, it's going to be created out of mass timber, um, which are fairly large sections of uh, wood posts with uh, three inch cross laminated decking. Um, it'll be uh, almost installed as it's brought to the site. Um, so we expect the structural erection to be fairly quick once the uh, foundations are in. Um, it's built into the hillside. It has a, a small portion of the building is underground, uh, the mechanical room, which kind of um, moves up towards Chapin Drive itself. Um, I think that's the end of my presentation. 
Uh, so I'll leave it there. Questions on the board before we open it up to the public? All right, at this point now, we'll ask if there's anybody in council chambers who would like to speak to this application. Hearing none here in council chambers, we'll go out to our our uh, virtual participants. Is there anyone in the Zoom room who would like to speak to this? And again, I you speak a little lightly. You have to actually make your comments via the chat feature on your toolbar. Commenting either for questions about the application. Geez, what a quiet night. Yeah. Very good. Um, well, then back to the board. Yep. Yep. I'm going to miss the parking lot. <laughs> I use it a lot at night. And when it's not busy, it's been when I'm going to the plant house or somewhere else. Um, Somehow I think you're not alone. Yes. <laughs> we're so we're losing 18 spaces there. I see from the notes that the master parking planet Smith still says there's three spaces above our goal. Mm -hmm. Can you speak just a little bit to the the, the current parking plan? Or, uh, uh, so again, we're one of the biggest employers in the city. Yep. I'm really interested to in hearing how Smith is looking to reduce parking or incentivize non-vehicle. I can't give you, I can't speak to anything that might be coming in terms of policy or decisions. Um, that's out of my pay grade. But I do know that um, we are trying to reassess after COVID uh, when the coal campus was gone and they're slowly coming back and there's some hybrid options out there for uh, employees, what our parking needs are going forward. I know that that's, that's high priority right now for us. Um, what's really making even more of a priority is the uh, challenges we have with the geothermal project underway. Um, one of the things we are realizing about running a whole new set of pipes across campus is that the most available space is the parking lots. Yeah, That's where all the piping's going. So we have a challenge this coming summer and uh, summer of 25, while Central Campus is getting distribution piping up finding places for people to park. So we're, we're very conscious of that, and our campus police are very conscious of that concern. Um, so it's being looked at very carefully, and um, I think you'll we'll have more information coming forward, but I wouldn't be the one to deliver it, unfortunately. Good, yeah. I, I, I don't know how we move large institutions like Smith or Cooley Dick towards, uh, you know, uh, mitigating some of their parking, you know, with other kind yeah. of creative programming with their employees, especially not yes. so much visitors, but employees. But it's certainly something the city, as we try to reach all those carbon goals, really wants to. The, the campus master plan it calls is asking for us to institute a plan to move parking off central campus where we can to the other side of Elm Street where we might have space. And of course, we're moving forward with removal of the apartment units at, be, between Henshaw and Round Hill Road. Uh, right. Um, those were decommissioned when we built the units up on the end of Paradise Road. And um, we've been kind of using them as infill space since then, but they don't have a future on campus. So those will uh, hopefully come down this coming summer. Um, they put the kibosh on a development of any parking there uh, for the time being, but that's certainly not um, the final word. It's going to be in the future. And then we're also moving forward with development of some parking um, at the at the corner of Belmont Ave and Oaxaca Ave. Huh. Um, there's a plan to put, I think we can get 20 spaces there and we're working on that currently. So. Thank you. Other questions, concerns from the planning board? Nada. All right, is there a motion then? And hearing there are no chat comments, nobody's raised their hand again. Need to close public comment. Nope. All right, motion's been made to close public comment. Is there a second? Second by Stacy. Any discussion? Um, so any hanging things that we want to ask the applicant?
All right. All those in favor of closing public comment? Very good. Unanimous. <laughs> um, I don't think we have nary one condition for Smith College, no. which is unusual. It, and I would like to say that um, I went through this whole 61 page presentation and I want to uh, uh, speak my appreciation to the rest of your team, which is out there in the Zoom world. We're sitting here without many comments for a reason. You know, pretty good team here. It's a very uh, comprehensive um, presentation. Um, the list of the things, you know, the thought that's gone into maintaining the views and, um, you know, uh, getting rid of a parking lot and a curb cut and adding all this landscaping and, you know, lead gold and mass timber and everything else. Just like I got 12 different things on this side of my list over here. So good job. <laughs> on behalf of the project team, thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Um, and there's nothing extraordinary from DPW. Um, no, there were just really, um, I think it was a half a page of just detailed stuff. So uh, again, um, it, we on the city side had a very easy time reviewing. I mean, not easy because they were very long and detailed plan sets, but, um, <laughs> there, the, the the reason why there are no recommended conditions from our office and why DPW had very few comments, and I think Conservation Commission the same, is because they really addressed all the issues um, that needed to be addressed. Right. Right. I think these outdoor rooms, they're new to me. Um, I think they're really just a cool idea. These outdoor rooms in the back. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just some there's some cool features on here I haven't seen before. Great. All right. Well, then, hearing those positive remarks, is there a motion to be made? I like it. I just have to find the. Uh... Uh, okay, so I'll make I'll move uh, that we approve the major site plan review um, to demolish the existing building or move it. And build a new building uh, at 8 College Lane, map ID 31B-246, with no conditions. Right. Is there a second? Second. Sam, thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for coming down. Pleasure. Thank you very much. What's the people? <laughs> well, thank you. So perfect. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Although there's some really nice renderings here. <laughs> that would be huh? Oh, that's actually. Put there on this. Is that okay? Back in the day, that's how we did all of our presentations. So that is yeah. the, yeah, that's their architect's rendering of the pond view there. Yeah. Again, from, uh, if you're at the intersection of, say, where admissions uh, beats college, upper college lane, the view as you approach the building. From there, uh, this is the view approaching the building from, say, the campus center of Central uh, Chapin Lawn. They have these pictures of a bunch of like, dirty snow. <laughs> no, no, no. no. In fact, people, people, we're, we're under a lot of pressure to keep the flowers looking that good. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the front entrance. And there's the decorative brick entry. There's a bench there. It's very nice. And then there's the rooftop garden. So, Shangri La. <laughs> Thank you. You 
Yeah, that's what I think fairly similar once you get down a certain distance. Yeah, yeah, that's what well, we still have to continue the other one. So you have to open that and I can describe what's going on. I don't know if they're doing a lot of it in Florida. There's a lot of water there. They could do it. <laughs> but they are sinking. Yeah. Anybody need a break? Can we move on to our next one? Yeah. All right. Great. What do we have to do? So at uh, 750, we advertised a site plan review that a second detached two family by Goodview LLC at 44th Street, map ID 38B173, for a total of four units on site. This is off of South Street. Um, but I understand we uh, have some comments by our planning staff. Thanks. So um, we had advertised this because we were under the impression that the plan sets were going to be revised. Um, they're still working on some elevation uh, renderings and elevations uh, and design work on the building. So um, this one would need to be continued. I think they're going to be ready by January 11th, but I, there wasn't confirmation. We have the holidays, so it may, you, you know, Initially, I was recommending to a continuation to January 11th. We don't have anything yet on the agenda for that or the subsequent one. However, given the holidays, I don't know how much work is going to get done. So it might be better to continue it to this fourth meeting, but I'll leave that up to, to you all. Um, um, the site plans, I think, are ready to be resubmitted. It's just a matter of the renderings. Um, the... Uh, representative for the applicant did indicate that they thought January 11th would be okay. But I just want to put that caveat out there that, um, you know, um, and, and of course you can, if they aren't ready, you can always continue it again. Um, and because you're not opening this and evaluating it, it, you know, we won't have that quorum issue if a different set of you all are here on the 11th. Really nothing, uh, comes up for that meeting and they're not ready, what's the effect? Like, in other words, there's no meeting. Um, well, you could continue it again. So it would just be another quick vote to continue it to another date. But I'm saying there's no, there's nothing. We'd have to come here. Yes, yes you have to show up. Yes, we need at least four people to show up just to vote on that. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Push it to the um, Same thing may happen then, though, but there's a better chance that they'll be ready by then. Yeah. Right. So that would be the the 25th of January. Um. The is that right? Yeah. Yes. 25th. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um. Right now. Yeah. Let me just double check to see if anything is come. Yeah. Um, well, the deadline has passed for the 11th, and I'm just running through the list here to make sure I didn't miss anything. King Street. Um, Yeah, and the applicant's not here to really advocate for the 11th or... There isn't another permit application um, that's been submitted that we would schedule. So th that would be the only item. Yeah, the okay. So there's a motion on the floor, I think, to continue the application by Goodview LLC at 44th Street to January 25th at 7 p.m. I'll second that. Second. Yeah, uh, discussion. Carolyn, has Good U L L C brought something before us before? No, it's yeah. first time. Okay. Um, all those in favor of continuing until the 25th? Hey, yep. 
Unanimous. Um, they are represented by Berkshire Design. So um, I'm keeping in touch with them. Great. Okay. okay. Silk. Um, we do have a couple of a &Rs we could okay. take care of. We're scheduled for 8.30 for your application. So we've got to just stall a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, so do you want to do the two a &Rs? Sure. Okay. Let me bring those up. Um, the, the first approval not required is um, along um, Garfield Avenue, and I'm just going to screen share. Okay, might need to zoom in a little bit here. Um, oops. Um, here we go. Stop. So uh, this is in Florence, near Florence Center, and it's a twenty-one thousand square foot, approximately uh, twenty-one thousand square foot parcel with one hundred fifty-eight feet of frontage being proposed to be carved out of this larger. Um, two plus acre, um, or actually in total, almost three acre parcel. So the resulting um, two lots uh, would have 65 feet of frontage for the remaining lot. Um, so it'd be divided into a 65 foot frontage lot and 158 feet of frontage. Um, there's So this exceeds the frontage requirements for urban residential B district. And so I would just need, this is just an endorsement that this is not a subdivision, meaning it's not creating a new subdivision street upon which frontage would be um, created. All right. Questions from the board? There are motion to endorse the uh, A&R on, on Garfield Ave. To the A &R for that. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Is there a second? Stacy, motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, there's no public comment on these. Okay, hearing none. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, the next one is. Um, I think we did that one. Um, sorry. Who knows where Nutting Ave is? How'd you know it was that one? Any more trivia night? I know when you when you show it's it right there. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Mm -hmm. Pay state. So, um, got <laughs> it. Um, so this is really just um, cleaning up the lines and taking part of uh, Paper Street and reallocating it to a parcel. So it's not creating any new parcels. Um, and so Lonsdale Street is not really a street. It's a street in space, in in digital space um, and paper. Um, so it's really just um, sort of a map cleanup of a triangle. Does one abutter or the other kind of profit from it? I mean... No, I mean, really, it's there already, but this, this, so what happens is if, if there's a street that was approved decades ago, but it was never built, um, the abutting owners own to the center line anyway. And this is just sort of formalizing it in that way, because this will never be built. Right. It's their uh, recommendation to endorse the A and R at Nutting Ave. Yes, first the A and R at Nutting Ave. Great. So second. Second. Second by Melissa. Any discussion? 
All right. All those in favor? Lonsdale Street is gone now forever. Huh? <laughs> that doesn't have a cave. cave. Oh. <laughs> uh, you can take it up. With... <laughs> All right. Great. So we'll open up uh, hearing now for a site plan amendment to eliminate a permit condition number two by Monsieur Galabaf for work at 115 Con Street, Northampton Map ID 39A-33. This is a site plan review and it needs a simple majority of the board, four out of seven members. And there's a short presentation. Well, good evening. Uh, I don't have a much of a uh, presentation, but the only thing is that uh, uh, this... Just, just identify yourself for the record. Oh, okay. I, I told you, Mansur Ghalibov, uh, rank in holding. Um, uh, the development in old Gazette building that it is now the land. Um, uh, as I mentioned, I don't have presentation this permit came here uh, before you were born. This is the fourth time that it's an amendment. And um, uh, thank you for giving the permit, uh, which was for the hotel and the 31 unit condominium uh, by Con Street. Um, and that was from the beginning, it was presented that it is going to be in two phases. And uh, lot of reason behind it that it is uh, I decided to have two uh, two phases uh, all financial and farming and all of that all together uh, but the permit was given with a condition number two that it said um, uh, that after the hotel being built the occupancy permit won't be issued until the residential starts so that one condition basically wipe out the permit. So the permit actually didn't mean anything because bank has to be satisfied with the financing of the project and they weren't happy with it. It makes them nervous because it is uh, their investment and, um, and also a uh, lot of investment from me that I'm not about to do that, uh, to be in that condition. Uh, this is the project that it is a must have in Northampton. Uh, I've been in Northampton for 33 years. And uh, uh, I don't know how much you know about me by background and all of that. I'm not going to go through that, but I've uh, been here uh, for 33 years. And I know Northampton very well. Uh, done business uh, at the very beginning to uh, basically um, take the Hotel Northampton out of the bankruptcy. And um, it was in really bad shape and losing money. Uh, uh, owed, I remember at that time, which was 1990, 1990-1991, uh, owed the city for back taxes, almost 370, 80,000, somewhere around there, okay? So since I took it over, it's been wonderful and uh, uh, a lot of support, a lot of uh, uh, customers coming in, they are enjoying, they are coming back. They prefer to be in Northampton a lot of local people, uh, they supported the hotel and brought it to the point that uh, uh, actually just a little bit of on the business side of it, uh, it came to the point that um, people who want to be in those type of hotel, the historic hotel, uh, with the ambience and the character and so on that it has, uh, they came and some of the people like the corporate and so on, they went out to the other hotels that was built uh, just uh, right after, basically after five, five years, six years 
that I was at work on that. So anyway, uh, that made me to basically look for another parcel to put a hotel that to bring those, that market, that market part of the business to bring them to Northampton. So did that and uh, the food traffic got bigger in Northampton, uh, which is yeah. much needed. Again, now it is again to the point that it needs uh, even more. And um, the, after doing this study and all of that, I think um, Northampton, uh, it is a perfect location to have a hotel that is an extended stay. And this hotel will be uh, a uh, home too uh, by Hilton. So strategically, it is very nice and fitting to bring people from uh, the surrounding town to Northampton. And now, going to the uh, condition two, uh, of course, that was disappointing, and bank didn't appreciate. Uh, I have a very, very good relationship with the bank. And uh, they they uh, told me before even I, uh, I was buying the property that Mansur, it is guaranteed type of thing. But when you bought that, and now the condition in the, the whole situation, the banking and the loan and all of that, the interest rate went up crazy. And um, the, a lot of banks are very, very hesitant to loan money, very hesitant. And, but this bank, uh, they welcomed it. They said, we will give it, but we don't want to take that chance uh, with, the face, with the condition number two. Um, so anyway, here I am to ask that to lift that condition number two and uh, with no condition except the one that it is about um, the car charging for the electric vehicle, uh, which that was a, actually oversight. It is, uh, I just uh, also let you know that um, uh, for the hotel, I have on the plan to have infrastructure for the uh, charges, uh, almost the 40 something uh, parking uh, for the charges that it is gonna utilize uh, in the future, uh, not immediately. Right now, there is not really that many. We have eight, uh, they get used, but I don't see them like eight cars. I see two or three. So in Hotel Northampton as well, we installed it and uh, there are few. So um, the planned it in advance in order we don't dig the parking lot. Uh, we have all the conduits and everything or, or we plan to do it. And uh, also the residential will have some that from the, after being built, it will be operational. So uh, that's about the charges. Okay, and here we are. Any question? Uh, well, you understood. You understand the planning board concern about uh, the aluminium building in front, correct? That we're just concerned that five years from now, seven years from now, ten years, it will stay a vacant lot. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully not. Hopefully, <laughs> right? Yeah. No. It is. Um, uh, I brought everything to the table. Okay, uh, I think it was before I purchased it or, or uh, very immediately after, uh, I asked for a meeting with all the departments, everyone who is going to be involved with it, with the permitting and uh, uh, from the fire department that they were there to be able to everyone. And, um, and I said it at that time, this is the plan. And uh, uh, if I'm half good of an investor or developer, <laughs> I have to take the maximum usage out of that parcel. Uh, so my plan from the original that I, uh, that I shared with everyone 
it was that the hotel will be built first. I have uh, the down payment for the hotel. And meanwhile, that one is being built. Uh, first of all, I wish I could do both at the same time. It is easier. But that's not in the cards. So the decision was that two phases. And then by then, I will have enough to put down for the residential. Okay. When it is going to happen, I hope sooner than later. But uh, I cannot give a date. I don't know the future of it. I don't know the future of the economy. Yeah. And uh, if everything go right and and the economy is at least as good as today, uh, definitely that will be built. Uh, hopefully, even before it finishes. But if it doesn't, and there are other expenses too, you know, like example of it. Uh, I'm about to spend $2 million for renovating perfect. Mm -hmm. okay, that's the requirement of Mario. So um, uh, th there are expenses like that mm -hmm. for both hotels if you want to upkeep. And uh, I'm not going to have my properties to look shabby. I won't, I, I won't let that happen. And uh, whatever the revenue comes in, that's going to be uh, basically saved for the residential. Uh, that, that's the plan. Well, I mean, your reputation in the community is stellar. Um, and we certainly were not interested in trying to hobble you in any way. I, I think that the, our recommendation in that condition was, you know, what happens? What if? What if you build the hotel? And then something happens in market conditions or something happens in your life or something happens in who knows what. And the front portion of it never gets built. Mm -hmm. That was the conversation we were having is like, yeah. how can we we're, like we we're not trying to hobble you, but how can we how can we position ourselves to ensure that that second part? gets built. So that's where condition to, that's where it came from. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know if we have yeah. some suggestions of different ways to go about that. And, and is there money that can be put into a fund or, or you know, like we've done that? Well, I think we talked about that the first time around when there was a concern about the bond. I think since, uh, well, look, if I could take a step back. I just want to make sure it was later this afternoon, but um, I did send an email to everybody from Alan Wolf. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody got that. If they didn't, I can read that into the record. Uh, yeah, it was okay. kind of late. I just said yeah. that came in here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but um, so a couple things I'll get back um, to the letter, but I think the idea is that um, we believe the market is is um, strong for housing, will remain strong for housing. And as uh, Mr. Godaboff mentioned, um, he's obligated and wants to maximize the um, development of the property. I think that um, there is a risk that it might not get developed. However, because of the location, because of the demand in housing, there are probably other tools down the road the city could engage with in order to sort of get that to happen if it got to that point, if something horrific happened right. and, you know, nothing could happen after the hotel. I think the city has powers to do things for that. Um, so I will say that. And then... Um, then um, Alan Wolf's letter to the planning board, just summarizing the um, mayor's office is certainly advocating for um, the condition to be lifted before the reasons of not provide, not creating a condition that makes it impossible for him to get financing um, because of their perspective that it's a vital develop, um, economic development piece for the city and for the economy and for Con Street. Um, 
and the amount of revenue that would be generated that has been estimated for this property would be estimated at four and a half million dollars in spending in Northampton based on annual guest room numbers of 22,000 guests, um, which equates to $450,000 annually in property, hotel, and meals tax revenues. Um, and he emphasizes the project aligns with the city's vision for sustainable growth, promising to create numerous construction jobs, 50 permit jobs, um, contributing to the employment landscape and um, um, argues that, and given these substantial economic benefits, encourage the planning board to collaborate with Mr. Galiboff to ensure the project can move forward. And Alan Wolf is the economic development coordinator for the city? Yes, the chief of staff and economic development director. Um, are there any restrictions on the front portion of the lot to be kind of carved off and sold? No, that developer? could happen. Yeah. What um what would that front parcel look like for the next five years, say, while things became stabilized with the hotel? Well, I think you could yeah. Um have you seen the hotel in the summer? The hotel Northampton? Yeah. I spent a lot of money on that to make it look good. Same thing is, is going to happen there. And um, not to that extent, but presentable enough that when the new hotel goes there and customers come in, they don't look at a raw land. Okay? It is a hospitality uh, building. It is a it is a business that you have to have a pleasant booking. Okay? There is no two ways about it. And another, another uh, point that I want to make about what if, okay? I, I, I will explain it this way. When I talk to the person who is uh, from Marriott, from uh, Hilton, okay? These people are, that's what, that's what they, they go into the site, they qualify it, and they ask few questions, and then they tell the developer, that how it is going to come up and how, how much you should spend and what kind of benefit you will get from the followers and occupancy and all of that. So he comes in and says, uh, how much was the land? I said, well, I, I was hoping to pay a couple million, but it is three million. He said, that's too much. Okay, that's too much. You're not going to make the money. And then I said, well, it is 3.5, 0.78, whatever it is, acres. I'm going to do something else there. And that dividing it probably you know, will bring the cost down. Mm -hmm. Still, that was a little bit too much for the hotel that he was saying in this area. Okay, So now, to make the point, if I do not develop that land and get that investment return, it is not going to work. Uh -huh. okay. It will take a long time for that three million to be paid off. Okay, so as I said, I uh, I wish I could do both at the same time, but that's not in the car, and it is going to happen. Uh, I cannot promise the future, and um, uh, I, I asked for the cooperation and all of that to make it smooth, little uh, uh, painless, if you want to call it, to get excited and, and have the project to move forward. This project is supposed to, groundbreaking is supposed to happen in July, August, after improving the land with the uh, Geo peers and in all of that. Okay, here we are. Thank you. We are in December. Okay, and you mentioned it. Worth to mention it. Every month that it delayed, it cost me fifteen thousand right. dollars each month. Thank you, Mr. Gava. 
Um, um, just to, to your to your question, Mr. Galibov did submit in a response to that question and noted, and he said here, obviously, they'd like to do it at the same time, but um, he's saying not five years, but once the hotel's finished, within a year after is his goal to get started in construction. Okay. Um, I, I wonder if we just want to pause for a minute to open up the public hearing to see if there's any comments before we move on too much further. Um, so at this time, we'll open up the public comment period for anyone who would like to speak to this application on Con Street. Um, there's nobody here in council chambers. Is there anybody uh, wishing to speak on the Zoom room? I don't see any chats. Okay. All right, back to us. I mean, it sounds like um, what I what I'm taking from this is that you know the the bank the bank is really demanding that yeah. that all of the development happen over time, no matter what. It's a bunch of money on this land that only works. It sounds like unless the if the real estate is developed in the in the long term. So, I mean, he has an interest in it being done, and obviously we can't. Um, that's, the bank is saying that this is what needs to happen. You know, yep. we need to. Yep. I mean, it would, I would support lifting that to move this forward. Yep. Yeah, I feel similarly. I think um, the bank is not going to support the project with this condition. So there'll be no project. Yep. No. Yeah. I mean, that was our intention was obviously never to put you in a position where the we we couldn't get funding, mm -hmm. and we believe you one hundred percent what your intentions are. And if sorry, if the city's clearly signaling that they're okay with this then I can get behind that as well. If the city was sticking their heels in and saying, no, you know, we, we don't want to risk it, then, but. Right. Yeah. Right. No, and part of it goes to the reputation of the Hotel Northampton and the other work you've done for sure. Um, so again, uh, one of our major reasons was to make sure that the streetscape along Con Street was, looked good and became um, enlivened. Um, and I think what I'm hearing here is because it's the front entrance to your hotel, you'll make sure that there's landscaping done and something that makes the ambiance look good from the street. I don't know if we can make that a condition at all. Rather, our fear was just that it would stay macadam and, and torn up concrete and kind of a construction zone. Um, but certainly Hilton doesn't want that nor do you or your family want that. Um, but I don't know how we, is that just a handshake? Is that just a... Um... I mean, you could require um, plantings along the sidewalk at that, like, you know, for a certain depth, if you f think that that is, um, y you know, something that you'd want to do, sort of a temporary planting bed sure. for the first, you know, 20 feet of depth or something coming from the sidewalk mm -hmm. into the property. I think it is uh, mentioned in, in the, on the application that it will be, um, uh, it will be like flowers and wildflowers, grass or something, something that it is going to make it uh, look decent, of course. Right. And uh, right now is grass. <laughs> And um, and then it is asphalt, uh, which is going to come out to be the parking partially parking for, right. the, for the hotel. Right. And then, but that area uh, will be uh, cleaned up, and uh, the, the, the most economic way to make it somehow that to look decent, and uh, it is it is going to look nice. Yep. Uh, yeah. Okay, I know we talked about the sidewalk and the and the tree plantings along there, and there's a, a little bit of an unusual sidewalk, but um, I guess I feel comfortable too in eliminating this condition and trusting that because it is the front door to the hotel that they'll do their best to 
to make it look good with vegetation or lawn seeding or something. Yep. Hopefully, if everything go right, I will have enough to start even earlier. True. Hopefully, it's a moot that's point. The case, and then everything will be good. Yeah. You know, I mean, um, part of the whole equation is that you have to spend uh, the, as minimum as you can to make the thing work. Yeah. If not, uh, why would you do it? Why, why would you invest that you have to keep run after to just pay the bank? So it it, it has to be somehow. And uh, these are the reasons that, you know, if you look at uh, how the Fairfield got built, okay, I pushed it that we were ahead of the schedule and also um, on the contingency and all of that, there was good savings that we then spent. And uh, and then the project became success. Yeah. And uh, it's, it is, but so far, it's just been more expensive <laughs> from the land, from like, you know, again, the waiting and all of that. Right. So uh, I uh, I pay all those people that, you know, I mean, Caroline, you dealt with. Sure, okay. sure. The OCM, the architect, you know, two architects and, you know, so on. So anyway, yeah. it is... Uh, it, it it is a big project, and it will happen. Uh, even though a lot of people think that I'm nuts, <laughs> in my age. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that okay. is, me, that, that is definitely my last one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gonna do it, and it is gonna look beautiful that area, right. and uh, it is a it is a gateway to the city. Yeah. Yep. And. and uh, it is going to make the city to look very impressive. So, Good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, doke. Any any other questions, comments? I think we're all of the same mind, pretty much. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Motion to made to close the public comment. Is there a second? Stacy. Motion to made a second in any discussion. All those in favor, close the public comment. Move to eliminate the development at 115 Con Street. Okay. The uh, condition number two only. I'm sure there are other conditions there, but this one is number two. And we're not adding any other conditions at this point. Second. Right. Seconded by Melissa. Mm -hmm. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Good luck. Get to work. <laughs> I don't think I sent you minutes. No. Sorry. Did we have an open up again? What's, What's that? that? Oh, yeah, that was closed. Did they, did they, did that's real? Well, it's like my definition. I don't know. I don't know about the water. It's such a great little tavern. Yeah, they're probably going into the world. Yeah. Um, is there anything else, Carol? Any other matter to come before the board? To adjourn. Most of us are made to adjourn at, uh, ooh, what do we got here? Nine o'clock. Is there a second? Thank you, Stacey. Any discussion? All right, all in favor? Adios.